On today's episode of Authentic Living, we're talking faith, films, and how to run your race strong. I'm meeting up with the director of the new film that's executive produced by the Tebow brothers and also their lead actor. You don't want to miss this inspiring interview. Listen, if you've hit rock bottom, if you're going through struggles right now, you're going to be so encouraged and empowered to get up, lace your sneakers up, and finish your race strong. Listen, the Word of God says the race wasn't given to the swift nor the strong, but them that would endure to the end. So it's a marathon, but listen, we need each other to run this race strong. You don't want to miss this inspiring episode of The Authentic Living show. and we are so excited about a new movie coming out called Run the Race. We're talking shop here today at the International Speedway with the director and one of the lead actors and listen we are fired up about this film. Um, it's got a lot of grit, it's got God's great story in it and the importance of brothers coming together and um, fighting for one another and not giving up on your dreams. So I am here right now with the director. It's so great to be with you. Thank you for having us, Courtney. What a blessing. Well, thanks for taking time just to um, share your journey because, you know, you guys have, this has been a marathon talking about a race, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about the backstory of this film because it wasn't something that just kind of popped up over the last year or so. It's something that's been in the making for a while. Yeah, I mean, the, um, you know, the original writer and producer Jake on it, um, something he had written 14 years ago wow. and um and it, honestly it's a testament to you know just we were talking about running the race for persevering like it's a testament to him and really pushing through it mm. and um it was 14 years i think tim and robbie maybe got the script six years ago wow and then i got brought on to um to do the rewrite uh probably two and a half years ago mm. i mean it's just such a you know but just like anything it's never like this straight line right the journey is right. like all these tangents and fractions but ultimately um and then after that yeah it was you know it was a got on brought to direct it and then you know now we have this finished product that finally it's like you have this you know this just chasing period that's just so long and finally just ready to just like let the world see your baby so yeah congratulations that's what's on your ah, thank new you. baby right yeah, so thank you. this baby that you're presenting to the world you know there's really an awesome heartbeat behind it and i think you know you and i were talking earlier about you know quality of films and especially when there is some type of faith message unfortunately there's been a reputation of just not like that full on 100% excellence or a little cheesy, but you guys have really committed to this project to do everything with the spirit of excellence um, and to make sure this message was conveyed in the most authentic way possible. So what did that look like for you guys? Yeah, you know, like for any, anything I want to do, I want it to feel like real people having real conversations. Right. Um, and I think a lot of times, you know, especially movies that deal with faith, they get so message heavy that they forget there's actually like a story and characters to care about right. because they're so, um, you know, they're just, they, they've got this, this thing that they want to push across. And for me, like, I just feel like there's a lot of layering you can do and faith becomes a layer of the story. And, and I think people resonate with that because, I mean, we're all on this journey, you know, across the, the faith spectrum, whether you have little belief or tons of belief, like everybody wants the same things, right? Like it's like you all want to know that you're loved and that you, um, you know, you want the best for your family and that right. life, your life means something. And so I think trying to make it feel inclusive instead of exclusive is something that was very important for me. And to do that, um, I, I, yeah, and it's a testament to the actors. And, um, you know, my DP, Chris Kim Kimlin, and the, and, and the producers, Darren and Ken and Rob, just everybody, you know, it's just like we all were on the same page with like, we got to make this feel authentic. It's got to feel real. It's got to feel lived in. It's got to feel gritty. 
And, uh, and it's, it's been great. The responses we've gotten so far from the audience is that we, you know, that is exactly how it feels. It feels different and it feels fresh and that's what we wanted. Um, talking about team, right? It took a huge team to pull sure. this production off and a big part of the team was the Tebow brothers coming alongside this and really being a mouthpiece for this film and getting behind it and putting putting that heart and soul into this project too. So what was it like for you working with them and how did they feel about the finished product? Yeah, it's, you know, it's amazing. I mean, like, even coming on board, it was like, hey, like, this is going to be a project for the Tebos. Mm -hmm. So immediately, I'm like, okay, that's the Tebow brand. Right. People trust it. I got to say, Tim, I mean, we were watching, you know, Fallon a couple nights ago. Yeah, right? it's hilarious. And he's on, yeah. yeah. And, and, and Tanner and I were watching, and we're like, God, he's like the most perfect <laughs> human being in the world. He's like the most rad guy, and, like, yeah. he's this hard and everything. And it's so easy to be, um, have a public persona and then have a private who you oh, really yeah. are. And, and, and Tim doesn't have that. He is he is who he is, and he is what he says. And so for me, like, I have a massive amount of respect for that. And especially, he's really close to my heart, which is why we're out here too, because um, of yeah. you know Sparrow's Island on the Ranch, which is with Ricky Teal brought us out here. It's an yeah. amazing thing too. And he's been so invested in this project, and and you know especially like the football moments and making you know, it wanted to feel authentic. That's Cause that not was, a couple crosses. Yeah, because that was a yeah. distinction too. Like not only have to live up to like the dialogue you're wanting to pull off, and like you know the town of Bessemer actually became a character in and of itself. But like the football, especially because it's the Tebow. Was like right. we had to pull that off and so you know Robbie was crucial in that and I mean it's but again it's you know it's 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 an entire village that comes together. I mean, I think we're talking about, it's like it's like the summer camp feel like everyone yeah. gets there and you're having fun and and that's the thing too if like if 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 you're on set and it's not fun, I mean what are we really doing then? Like right. I, I never want to go to work and be like Oh, this sucks. I mean, Especially, just like, yeah. Especially when you have the privilege to be able to create, you know, meaningful films. Right. And, and you want to have fun while you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, and then, and then, but I also think that bleeds out on the screen. If everybody's like, kind of uh, shuffling yeah. through it, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not really, you know, so, so that was, the, the vibe was awesome. Uh, the Tebos, you know, were awesome. And, um, and yeah, everybody's super stoked with the, with the finished product. Like it's been, that's been super cool and rewarding. You know, and again, it was a collaborative process, but it's, so it's always scary. And so come out and have the finished product and the response we've been getting. Um, Again, it's, I don't know, it's super humbling. It's been awesome. I mean, it's that's been awesome, awesome, so yeah. So what words of encouragement do you have for somebody that's watching right now that they're in that season of their life where they've hit rock bottom and they feel, you know, everything's coming at them, um, but they feel like, you know what, there may be something worth fighting for. You know, there may be something worth getting up for. You know, what words of encouragement do you have that you can just speak life into them and say, you know what, our races all are different, but we're all running in the same direction. So what do you want to say to them? Yes, struggle sucks, and everyone has their different struggles. You know, if, if, you, if someone is struggling, um, I think you just gotta know that like, yeah, obviously it gets better. Like this is just a season, or this is just a moment. It's a momentary lapse. And then life is, again, it's, it's fractured and it's tangential and we're doing all these things, but ultimately, like, God loves you. And that gives, that, that, that you have value because God says you have value. And that's one thing even my girls I try to stress is like, doesn't matter what anyone tells you. It's like, you are loved by the guy who created this. So like you have value intrinsically, like no one can take that from you. Okay, so Chris, it's been a pleasure just talking with you today, just hearing about your heart, your passion for film, um, for authenticity. I think that's needed in this industry. I think it will resonate with so many people and we just speak blessings oh, over thank you, you and this Appreciate film. It. We know that God is going to be glorified in such a powerful way in this film. Where can our viewers go to get connected with you? Um, I don't, I'm so terrible at all things uh, with that, but um, I, well, I'm, 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 I'm an Instagram, like, yeah, I've got yeah, an Instagram okay. account. It's like Chris underscore Dowling okay. underscore director. And then of course we'll have all the information up for run. Please do. Yes. Thank you so much. Pleasure, hey, I appreciate, appreciate it, Corey. Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. And I'm here right now with the one and only Mr. Tanner Stein. It's good to meet you, man. Yeah, good to meet you too. So listen, you know, it's a new season, it's a new year, new beginning, and I think it's been a long time coming for a really powerful film that is just rooted in a, a story of two, two brothers really overcoming life's obstacles. I think we live in a time right now where there's a lot going on in the world, and I think people need hope, and I really feel from this movie that people are going to walk away um, with their hope filled, being encouraged, inspired to dust themselves off and get up and fight again. So what has this film meant to you? Uh, a lot, you know, I mean, it's been quite the process. It was quite the process filming. It's been quite the process actually getting it made. Um, and then we just had the, the LA premiere, so we all got to see each other again and uh, see the response that, you know, people had to it. And it was, it was really cool, it meant a lot. 
Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier off camera about that this film kind of sat stagnant for a little while. That um, it was written a while back, like you said, 15 plus years ago, and then now you guys had the opportunity to bring it to life. So, what kind of responsibility was that to make sure that this film was really portrayed in an authentic way? Yeah. So the the writer and and uh, creator producer Jake McIntyre and I got pretty close over the course of shooting, and uh, I just found out what a great guy he is and what this story meant to him. And uh, I think after everyone kind of understood that, it uh, didn't necessarily put pressure on us, but it, it definitely raised the bar for everyone to do justice to the story that he was trying to tell, that he was, you know, so passionate about, had so much faith in. Well, you know, to whom much is given, much is required, right? Exactly, so it, yeah. it is a weight to it, but it sounds like you guys all teamed up together and really put your hearts and soul into this project. Yeah. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about your character and how you relate to him? Uh, so my character, uh, Zach Truitt, the high school football player. Uh, he's got a younger brother, Dave. Uh, their their mom recently passed uh, two years prior to the beginning of the story. Their dad left them, sort of. He's estranged. He's an alcoholic, and so it's it's really just them two. Uh, and uh, I, I I relate to Zach because he's you come to find that he's very stubborn mm, okay. uh, throughout throughout the film, and I I think. Um, I think I, I can be a little stubborn at times too, but he also lives with a lot of zest, and he does things with with passion. Hmm. And if he and if he says he's going to do something, he does it 150 hmm. percent. And uh, playing this part just allowed me to find uh, that special piece of myself. That's so, really cool, yeah. and you know, especially as an actor, to be able to relate to your character, it truly comes across 100% authentic. And so, what was really the number one thing that you took away um, from this film that really impacted you personally? Well, uh, when you talk about authenticity, I think one of the coolest parts about the film is that Chris Dowling, the director, suggested that that me and the uh, Evan Hofer, the kid who plays my brother, that we live together. Oh wow! Throughout the course <laughs> of filming. And so we did. Luckily, we didn't hate each other. We hit it off right away. <laughs> you survived it, right? Yeah, we, we balanced each other out very nice, and we became fast friends, and we're still really good friends today. And it, and it, it made for an easy filming experience, and the dynamic became so natural because of that. And uh, yeah, I'm just lucky to have walked away with, you know, a, a great a great friend that's such a yeah. blessing man well talk to us a little bit about too um what is your desire that you know people are coming out to see the film here soon what do you want them to walk away with like what if you could put a theme around this film and what it means to hold the whole cast and crew what do you want someone that sits down on that seat whether they're a person of faith or they're not what do you want them to um take away i think they're uh a constant theme throughout the film. I mean, there's plenty of messages and things you can take away. I think a constant theme is is support. You know, the the support that these brothers have for each other, the support they're shown by their um, mentors around them. So, uh, if people can walk away feeling, yeah, you know, encouraged to support, and in today's day and age, uh, especially especially in, in the youth, like I, I feel like that's a very important. Uh, thing that young kids need to learn is how to support each other uh, and also recognize where their support is coming from and if you know if, I mean if you end up watching the film and you want to call your brother or it makes you want to call your mom or your dad mm. or someone you care about uh, then it's done its job that's powerful so yeah. a story of forgiveness and the power of partnership right I know yeah. that the word talks about iron sharpening iron and we need one another I think in this world we're really connected socially on social media and platforms but when it comes to face to face and really getting in, in the battle with someone else and fighting for them and fighting beside them I think that's a rare thing so I'm excited that you guys have put that message out I think it's so needed and I know that many people leave inspired encouraged and empowered um, to run their race right um, and run that's it right. strong and run it with faith and courage and that grit and grace so where can our viewers go to stay connected with you and follow your acting journey because you've got some other cool projects coming up as well yes um, yeah uh, I'm, I'm going to Toronto next month to work on season two of a show uh, called impulse it's on YouTube TV it's a YouTube original uh, so that'll be fun 
and uh, yeah, you follow me on Instagram, I guess. Awesome, Tanner. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure just talking shop with you and just yeah. pray God's best over your career and your future family and endeavors. And we're just grateful for you sharing your authentic voice. Likewise, thank you, right. Courtney. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Courtney Shaw here with 24 Flicks. Listen, I am here with someone extra special today, Mr. Ricky Teal with Sparrow Ranch Productions. It's great to be with you. It's great to be here, man. We're at the Daytona 500, man. Can you Doesn't believe it? Doesn't get any better than that, right? I think you're right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, just kind of your, your, the heartbeat behind everything that you do at Sparrow Ranch. Well, as you said, my name is Ricky Teal. I have a foundation um, for those with special needs and their families it's called spare ranch on the island and um yeah we just uh you know actually it's at my home uh we built the outdoor amphitheater and the kids come from up and down the east coast and just gather right there on the sandy shores and uh it's there where they lead the worship it's so incredible you have so many people show up with doctorate degrees and in, in, in uh that are pastors and you they have to be wiped up when they see this pure worship when these kids, some are nonverbal, uh, some are deaf, but when they bring their talents that God has given them to worship, it's incredible. So tell me a little bit about the history behind Sparrow Ranch because obviously God had to move on your heart in a really intense way to open up your home and create this atmosphere where these special things could take place. It would take about a week to answer that question, but, <laughs> but, but you know, um, one thing I have learned in life is you don't find your purpose. Your purpose will find you. And when it does, your passion will push your purpose. And um, that's what happened. I never set out to be in the special need industry. And I seen a quote somebody posted the other day that said something about um, you'll find your ministry in your brokenness. And what's so interesting is um, as I said, I had no connection to special needs at all, but I dated a girl um, that was deaf hmm. and uh, things didn't work out. And so sometimes when relationships break, there's a brokenness. Sure. And from that moment on, something changed. Hmm. And um, so it was birth right there at my house. It was incredible. Wow. You know, I love that saying that says sometimes rejection is really God's way of redirection. Yeah. And so even for him to bring that woman into your life for that season, just to give you a glimpse of what your purpose would be. And really that mess, what you thought was a heartache, became a beautiful message. And really your purpose here on earth, and that's to celebrate those that um, battle with disabilities and that maybe feel like outcasts. And you've created an atmosphere where they feel welcomed and at home and truly liberated and free to be who God's called and created them to be. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about um, your passion just with the film industry and coming along different projects and supporting them as well. Well, you know, for me, everything is, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. And what was so neat, um, I never set out to be in the filmmaking or any of that kind of stuff, but when we started having these events, uh, I had makeup artists and people who were happy to be filming in town and they said, hey, I seen on Facebook that you're having this event. I'd love to come put makeup on uh, the kids. And so then we had actors and people started showing up and um, the Lord had just kind of give me this quick download of a, of, of a film um, called Remnant of Hope. And it's uh, two children that have special needs. One is nonverbal. And so we, um, we filmed that thing. Uh, Karen Amacrombie from War Room was in it, and I pitched it to this festival, my favorite festival in the world, International. Talk to us about that film I'm festival. telling you, the International <laughs> Christian Film Festival, my very first film that was written on a, a, a napkin um, that the Lord had put in my heart, and I submitted it, and it was nominated like for three awards at International Christian Film Festival, and then it gets picked up uh, on Uplift TV, and you know, I was like, wow! So I saw the, that God blessed what we had done. And um, he hasn't stopped yet. So what is your desire long term for Spare Ranch? What do you want the legacy of that place to be? Just getting the vision out there, um, not just here, but across the, the world. So well, where can our viewers go to get connected with all the incredible things that you have going on? You can go to spareranch.org. Our website okay. pretty much has everything. And uh, it'll have all the Facebook links and all that stuff. And um, I'd also like to you know, say one thing while we're here, while we're at the track. Um, you know, God is so good. 
It's little things in life that he knows the desires of your heart. He, he says he puts them there. And uh, sometimes I get emotional even talking about it, but at nine years old, my granddad brought me here. Wow. Yeah. And um, this is the 34th race for me in a row. Mm. And I came as a fan so many years. And um, God had an owner one day that showed up at Sparrow Ranch. And he was so moved that he put, he completely marked up a truck like you've seen. Mm -hmm. And he said, I believe in what you're doing. And I want to do this. I said, I have no money. What I'm getting at is God has opened up this platform. And we're on uh, this truck. He's opened a platform for me. Everything's about ministry. So he's opened the door for me. What I love my whole life of racing. I'm on one side of the fence for many, many years, but now Come on the other side. And it's an avenue into my mission field. Not so. incredible. God is so faithful. You know, he'll put you in an atmosphere many, many years ago as a young boy and bring you back full circle yeah. um, to put you on display for his glory, for your good and his glory. You're, you're right. And it's connected uh, with uh, like Chris, who has passion for those with special needs and Tim Tebow. It's just yeah. a perfect fit to be here. You're an awesome man of God. And I'm excited just to get to know you and grow our friendship. And I just pray blessings over everything that God is doing in your life. And I truly believe, again, he's just getting started. The well, best thank you. is yet to come. Thank you. And you've encouraged me today just through uh, some of your scriptures and some of the things you said. Thank you. It's such a blessing. Well, we'll be right back with much more. Listen, get to your local theater. You've got to experience Run the Race. It's time. Lace up those sneakers. Keep fighting the good fight of faith and finish strong. All right, well, it's been an incredible time just speaking with the director and uh, one of the main actors of Run the Race. Listen, I don't know what you're going through right now, but God doesn't want you to quit. Don't give up. You know, dust yourself off, lace those sneakers back up, and get up and run again and fix your face like a flint because God has incredible things for you. Listen, it's time for you to wake up and live your authentic life.